Hallo zusammen. When you think of German music acts that are popular worldwide, these guys have to be mentioned, of course. Ramsch... Uh, scorpions! Not the animal, but the band from Hanover in Germany, which in German, by the way, is Hannover. With two N. Hannover. Those are things we can't deny, like the fact that I'm gonna tell you more. Five things in specific about Scorpions, the international rock stars from Germany. To me, Scorpions, without the the, by the way, they are a really unique band in many ways, I think. In German, it's Der Skorpion, singular. Die Skorpione, plural, the Scorpion. The band's name is both a direct part of their visual and textual appearance with titles such as Love at First Sting or The Scorpion's Tale on the 1988 album artwork for Savage Amusement. You know, during my research for this video, it just occurred to me that you reach so many different people, demographics, you know, from all walks of life, young kids, teens, adults, everyone. And with those different fan groups, you have all of them. You have the OG fans from the 60s, 70s that still like that style much more than maybe their later, more accessible style. And then you also have the younger kids that grew up with the band's biggest hits, which were released arguably in the 80s and 90s. And somewhat in between, some like both, you know, it's, it, it's such a strong mixture. And I think that alone speaks for the quality of the band and of their art, their music. The band's long-time run also leads me to fact number one. In 2025, the band will celebrate their 60th anniversary. And I did the math. That means they were founded in 1965, but under the name Nameless. By the 15-year-old singer and guitarist Rudolf Schenker, guitarist Karl-Heinz Vollmer, bassist Joachim Kirchhoff and drummer Wolfgang Zioni in Hanover, Germany. Now, you may have noticed that singer Klaus Meine isn't among these names, and that is because he, in fact, isn't an original member. He joined the band four years after their formation in 1969. That, however, and that is also something to acknowledge here, makes him the second longest serving member of the band to date. Now, what I'm gonna say may sound strange, arguably speaking, but it's true. The addition of Klaus Meine in 1969 didn't really change anything in terms of the discography of the band. And that is because their debut album, Lonesome Crow, was released in 1972, which means three years after he had joined the band. He basically is there from the get-go, in a way. And then again, he isn't, as we learned, because he wasn't an original member. But in the eyes of most people, I guess, he somewhat is. The band's decision to write songs in English to appeal to an international audience worked out well right from the get-go, though, because that first album, Lonesome Crow, already became a success in England, France, and even abroad in Japan. Have you ever heard of the term persistence? Well, I guess the Scorpion's career basically sums all that up, what that word entails. In other words, their success didn't come overnight. So, while the band was already pretty well known in Germany and some other countries since the mid-70s, and even by then they were already well known as a really strong live act, it wasn't until 1984 and the release of Love at First Sting that they achieved commercial success worldwide and especially in the USA. At first, the album was recorded in the famous Swedish Polar Studios, known for the production of most ABBA albums, but after arguments between some of the band members and the producer Dieter Dierks about the album's production, the band kept the guitar parts that they recorded in Stockholm and resettled to Cologne to finish the album there. The record features quite a few of the band's signature songs and biggest hits, arguably speaking, Rock You Like a Hurricane, also Still Loving You, and also... A lesser hit, so maybe, but one of my personal favorites, Big City Nights, great chorus, great song in total. And that success from the early 80s onwards, basically, I guess also may have had to do with a band member change, you know, a lineup change. And that, ladies and gentlemen, leads me to fact number three. Drei. Throughout their career, the band has had quite a few lineup changes, which also resulted in different stylistic approaches. 1960s and 70s Scorpions arguably had a more experimental, crowd-rock-driven sound, while the 1980s Scorpions adopted a more mainstream hard-rock style, you could say. 
One of the reasons for the band's earlier stylistic approach was the former member Uli John Roth. While not having been a founding member, he shaped the band's sound in the early years as the lead guitarist and sometimes also as the composer, lyricist and singer between 1973 and 1978. I counted and if I'm not mistaken, the band has had members in total, excluding guest musicians, which also makes Rudolf Schenker the only original member in a way, you know. He was there from the get-go and he keeps rocking. Now, arguably, fact number four is a very Germany-focused fact, you could say. One of their biggest hits in Germany was a different tune, because, you know, in 1990, around that time period, in our country, there was a wind of change that whistled through the air. The song was released on the band's 1990 album Crazy World. And even though nowadays the song is strongly tied to both the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989, which separated West Germany and East Germany and literally cemented two Germanys existing at the same time, and also being connected to the German reunification in 1990, singer Klaus Meinem actually wrote the lyrics as an homage to the Moscow Music Peace Festival. However, then history did what it always does, it just happens, and that is why the official music video of the song also depicts iconic scenes of the Berlin Wall falling, the whole German reunification era, and the overall downfall of the Soviet Union, which gave the song and its hopeful lyrics a new twist. And during my research I also learned that there's apparently a conspiracy theory that the CIA wrote the song together with the band in order to make that happen, you know, to, to make the downfall of the Soviet Union happen. Yeah, I don't know about that. Fact number five has to come last because it sort of is about the everlasting work of the band, the five guys from Germany. The band is among the longest lasting music acts in the entire world. And for reference, the Rolling Stones were founded in 1962, which is just three years earlier. And even though there have been multiple talks of quitting throughout the years, the band is still going strong. They even announced their breakup a few times in recent years and even played an official farewell tour and a subsequent last unplugged tour. But to this day, the band still carries on and arguably still enjoys recording new music and playing live. It's pure speculation, arguably, but I could see fit that, you know, the addition of former Motorhead drummer Mickey D, also from Sweden, by the way, maybe his addition and him being a very, still a very energetic and playful drummer, he may have had to do with the band having sort of a resurgence and, you know, being revived, feeling revived and vitalized again. I don't know, but I could definitely see that fit. To me, their 19th and most recent 2022 album Rock Believer is as strong as some of their best albums with a great production and it features great hooks, you know, that have a good chance to become catchy tunes. And while I'm at it and sort of coming full circle here as well, one of my personal favorite songs of the band may be I guess it was a hit in a way, but a deeper cut hit maybe, if you know, if that exists, is Passion Rules the Game from Savage Amusement, the one I talked about at the beginning of the video with the scorpion tail on the front cover. I just love that song. Maybe you share that, I don't know, maybe you have other favorites of the band, if so, feel free to tell me because I sure would like to know. I love music, I love the band, and I would like to talk about it, of course. And that is why I made this video, which I hope you enjoyed as much as I enjoyed making it. I truly do. I love making these videos for you guys and talking about music in specific, but also other topics, you know, learning German with movies, series and whatnot, video games. You can find all of that and more on my channel. Over 600 videos waiting for you there. So feel free to check them all out and feel free to support me and the channel and my microphone. Liking, sharing, subscribing, but especially sharing is very important because it really helps your favorite creators to get more reach, you know, to get more out there and to get the word out basically, to spread the word. And with that being said, thanks for watching and definitely tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.